Hi, I'm the woodpecker today. I'm making bookends. My mother can't take care of her house anymore. She's moving to a small apartment. I couldn't let go of this magnificent bookcase. It's full of beautiful carvings, and on top of that, my dad restored it a long time ago. He even recarved some pieces that were missing or broken. Now you know where I get my carving skills from. So before I move this bookcase home, I decide to make something original to add my personal touch to it. I start by printing out several images, which will help me make these bookends. Beginning with a picture of a real woodpecker. The final product, the bird and the tree. Two birds, one in front of the other. The wood colors I'll be using, and finally, several patterns of the woodpecker. Before even starting to do anything, I rip a small piece of ebony in half. Now I can go through all my colored wood scraps to find some pieces big enough to make all the parts for bold woodpeckers. After I found them, I stick them together, two by two, using double-sided tape and stick their patterns on them. Then I cut all the pieces. I print the line pattern in red so it's easier to see what to cut or not. The lines turn black when they're cut. When one piece is cut, I place it in its place on the pattern. This way, I can keep track of the pieces. I cut the non-ebony parts first and continue with the ebony ones. After several hours, all the pieces are cut and nicely placed on their pattern. I just need to shape them. I start with a Dremel tool by rounding over all the edges. I finish the job with a finer grit with an inflated sanding drum. Then, using instant glue, I glue all the pieces cut from the same board together. Then, I fine-tune all the pieces, which fit one inside the other to get a nice tight fit. The rest of the pieces are done this way. As each piece is done, it gets glued in. When all the pieces are glued in place, I can start to work on the trees the birds are perched on. I begin by cutting a scrap piece of walnut square. I glue the trees pattern on it and cut both trees. The corners are rounded with a band sander. It's easier and faster for big pieces like those. Again, the final sanding is done with a pneumatic drum. Now I can glue back all the pieces together and leave both of them to dry. When the glue is dry, I recut both ends straight. It's here that I've noticed a small problem. Those birds need some back support. So I put the tree cut off back, trace the bird contour, and cut its shape.
This is what the bird support will look like. But now I notice that there's not enough wood left on the last cutoff for the second woodpecker. So I stick the piece on my table saw sled and cut a straight line. Now I add a small block to it and end up with enough wood to make the second back support. Next, I glue and clamp both boards support onto both trees. After the glue is dry, I need to do something for this ugly back. Mmm, it's all smooth now. Now I can work on the book support itself. I begin by ripping in half a four-quarter piece of maple. make both sides straight with the thickness planer. Then I cut them to their final dimension. With double-sided tape, I stick both sides together. Then both sandwiches are stuck together, shifted by the thickness of one finger of its finger joint assembly. Then they are cut. Next, I mark the placement of the assembling dowel's holes, punch them in the center, and drill them. Then, with sander finders, I find the placement of the mating holes in the tree and mark them. Now that I know where to drill the holes, I clamp that to a big square piece of wood and drill the holes. After cutting enough dowels, I find where to drill the bottom holes and drill them. After assembling it, I noticed that I never took in consideration the thickness of the finger joints. I marked the maximum height of the tree and cut a broken tree shape. I also cut a rounded shape on the maple pieces. Then, the curved shapes are rounded over. Now I'm ready to glue both woodpeckers in place. I spread wood glue on the back of each piece and put them in place. I do the same thing for the second one. Next, I lay sandbags on top of them and leave them to dry. When the glue is dry, I use instant glue to glue the feet of the birds. Then, I drill a hole in each bird for the eye. Then, I glue them in place. The legs are sanded because they're way too thick. The eyes are also sanded to the thickness of the bird's face. Then, a tiny hole is drilled in the center of the eye and painted with black dye. Now that both birds are finished, I sand the interior of the book support. Then, I glue everything together.
I put one clamp on each bookend and let the glue dry. When the glue is dry, I sand the finger joint flush to the wrist. The support was a bit too wide, so I planed all the sides flush to each other. Next, I sand the maple and round over all the sharp corners. I just need to cut some brass plates for the bottom book supports. Finally, I spray four coats of lacquer on everything. I use some recycled velvet cardboard that I stick under the brass plates. I begin by sticking four layers of thin double-sided tape on the brass. Then stick the cardboard on them. The excess is cut with a paper trimmer. I stick the book ends to the brass plates with double-sided carpet tape. Those book ends are now finished. I just need to put my favorite books in between them. Thanks and see you for my next episode of The Woodpecker.